Hi, this is the last episode concerning the sensor infrared counter measures AQ24. Today this will be a technical episode. I have done the complete reverse engineering of that system. On that page there is the power supply for the micro channel plate which is here. Actually this is the dual micro channel plate. The power supply was on that board which is a little bit destroyed. First let's have a quick look on the optical stuff. This is the wide angle optics which is this thing here. I can see that there is here a part. So this is actually a bulb. As you can see it is a little bit destroyed. This bulb is used obviously for a self-test. When this bulb is supplied there is a strong infrared light which is fed to the sensor so this permits to detect if this thing works or not. Following the optics there is a micro channel plate assembly. It was inside this thing with a strong vacuum inside. There are three wires. One is connected to the frame of that thing. This is the yellow wire here. It is connected to the ground here. And the two other wires are connected to the micro channel plate. The micro channel plates permit to intensify the light. So for that purpose we need a high voltage between the two plates here. And also the third connection here is the anode actually. So we need also a high voltage between the right micro channel plate and this one. As it is connected to ground we need a negative voltage at this point and a more negative voltage on that point here. Following the micro channel plates there is a filter. So I don't know exactly, I am not expert in optics, but there are a lot of filters like that, filters or polarizer. There is one here, other one, and also this greenish stuff, and another one here. And following the filter and the MCP, there is the PSD, so this is a four quadrant detector, this beautiful thing. The PSD itself is polarized with a high voltage of 2.5 kV. The schematic shown on that page permits the generation of these three power supply voltages plus 2.5 kV, a voltage of minus 1.4 kV. And there is another negative voltage which is more negative than this one which is applied to that line here. First, let's have a look on the schematic diagram which permits to generate the minus 1.4 kV here. This is a schematic diagram for the power supply which generates the minus 1.4 kV. This power supply is located on that area here. This is the transformer we can see here. There are several diodes here for the voltage multiplier. Uh, we can see some of them here. So as you can see this is a not oscillating power supply. This is a classic system. The switching transistors are here, this one and this one. And the feedback winding is here. The output voltage depends on the current applied to that line here. The high voltage output is applied to a voltage divider. There are two resistors of 100 megohms. We can see one of them here. So at that point the voltage is still negative. The voltage is fed to this voltage follower. This voltage is shifted in order to be positive using these two resistors connected to the reference voltage which is 2.5 volts. So this permits a comparison with the positive reference here. So this is the error amplifier. You can adjust the output voltage by this trimmer. The output voltage here drives directly this transistor which permits to adjust the base current of these transistors. But there is something else which is interesting on that design. So you can see that there are two capacitors here between the middle point of this transformer which is connected to the power supply and the common point of these two resistors. So this permits to the AC current to circulate through the resistor, the transistor and, and the primary side here. So this current flowing here is a DC current which returns to the ground through this resistor of one ohm. So on that line there is an image of the power supply current of this DC-DC converter. This voltage is applied uh, to this op-amp, to the negative input here, the positive input 
is that uh, fixed potential. So this is actually a current uh, protection. When the supply current is below 50 milliamps as the output, uh, there is a high level. Uh, the pump here is saturated actually. We should have a voltage uh, close to the maximum power supply voltage here. So this gives a reference point to the emitter of this transistor. When the current is above 50 milliamps, the voltage here will decrease. And in that case, if you suppose that the output voltage has not changed, then the transistor will be off, this will turn off the power supply. So it is possible to calculate the output voltage. I have reported on the schematic the main resistors which are used for setting the output voltage. There is first uh, this trimmer resistor which is 200 kilo ohms. There is a resistor here of 590 kilo ohms. There is a reference voltage of 2.5 volts. This resistor is 100K. There is another one, 62.5K here. So first I have calculated the reference voltage on that point. So if we suppose that the whipper is at 50%, the voltage here is 0 0.31 volt approximately. So we should have the same voltage on that point. After calculation, it is possible to calculate the output voltage of this op-amp, which should be minus 1.05 volt approximately. It is the same voltage here. And after that, you just need to multiply this value by the ratio of these two resistors. So this gives an output voltage here of minus 1.4 kV. And this voltage is applied, as you can see, to the second microchannel plate with a 1K resistor in series here. This is uh, one of these two resistors. You can see, so this is a carbon resistor. So this one is the white wire, so it is the second one. It is this one. The other one is for the second uh, microchannel plate. On the bottom of that page, there is a second power supply, which permits the generation of the voltage here, V2. So this negative voltage is added to the first one here using this voltage doubler. So the schematic is here. Actually, this part was not present on the board. It was torn off when I removed the potting of that thing. The part was here. So I thought in the beginning that it was an IC, but actually it is not the case. As you can see, the spacing is not standard for an IC. It is not compatible with an SO8. So it is something strange, but I have done the schematic here, and you can see that this part is actually a transformer. If you place four windings, like indicated on the schematic, you can see that this is another auto oscillant system. There are two output voltages, one here and the second one here. If you suppose that there are two windings, as represented on the schematic, this voltage here is the sum of these two voltages. And this voltage is applied to a voltage doubler, as you can see. So the reference voltage of this doubler is the first high voltage, actually. On that line, there is a voltage which is more negative than the previous one. And this voltage drives the first microchannel plate. So the system is very simple. It is also something classic. The switching transistor is here. The primary coil is this one here, this is the feedback coil. The feedback coil is in series with the base, like in the first schematic. And the base current is adjusted by this transistor. The error amplifier is here. It drives directly the base of the transistor through this resistor. There are two outputs, one positive and one negative. The first secondary here is fed to this voltage doubler. So this voltage doubler is regulated, as you can see. There are several resistors for filtering here. The regulation is performed on that point here. You can see that there is a resistor of 15 meg and another one connected to ground of 150K. It is possible to calculate the output voltage. There is a reference voltage here of 2.5 volts. And the ratio of these two resistors is exactly 100. There is a factor of 100. So the output voltage is 100 times the reference voltage here. That is to say 2.5 kV. And this voltage is applied to the sensor. As you can see, I have represented in details the sensor here. Through four resistors of 270K. Okay, so this voltage is at plus 2.5 kV from the ground. 
So we can see these resistors here, this one, this one, and this one, and this one. And of course, uh, there are four capacitors which permit uh, to isolate uh, the high voltage here uh, to the front end. So these four lines are connected uh, to the front end, which permits uh, the measurement of these four currents. And we can see the size of these capacitors. I have measured the value of 10 nanofarads. Uh, on the bottom of that page, uh, there is a circuit which permits to drive uh, the bulb for the self-test. So this is very simple, there is nothing special. The current is defined by the voltage reference and this resistor because this point is a virtual ground. So the current flows here. So this transistor it provides the voltage. The voltage is converted into a current. This current flows through the lamp here. So there is a diode here and two resistors which permits to turn on or off this circuit. So this line is connected to the CPU. I think it's a CPU but it can be also an FPGA. So this is the first page concerning the high voltage power supply. So now let's see the rest of the circuit. These two parts are these ones here. It is impossible to see the reference. It is very difficult to remove these parts. So these parts permit to have a constant temperature on the part we will see later. On the left, there are the connections to the photo sensor, the four lines here. So this part is the front end for the sensor. There is nothing special. There is an output here, which is connected to the second part. So I think that this part is an ADC. And this part also is connected to the CPU using five lines here. And the second part is connected to the CPU. So I think this is an ADC. As you can see, so there is a voltage reference here connected to that line, pin 2. And on the bottom, there is a reference voltage circuit. So there is a voltage reference of minus 1.23 volts. This negative voltage reference is amplified. And the output is a positive voltage of approximately 3 volts. I have calculated, but I don't remember exactly the value, but uh, it is 3 point something volts. And this is used uh, for this part. Next the schematic is the CPU or FPGA. I think it is a CPU. It is connected to a 32K by 8 EEPROM. It is this part here, the microprocessor or FPGA is here from Atmel, but I didn't find anything concerning this reference, it is very obscure. There is a clock oscillator of 8 MHz here, there is also a reset circuit here. The last thing is an RS422 interface, there is a differential line receiver here connected to one point of the microprocessor. And the differential input here is available on two pins of the rear connector. So this line is also connected to the input of one NAND gate. But I didn't find anything connected to the output. So this is maybe uh, for test purpose, I don't know. The last page concerns uh, the regulation of temperature of the front glass. This thing here and the front-end part also, so on the top there is a control of the front glass so this is very simple, there is nothing special, the thermistor is here so we can see the physical thermistor which is this little thing here this is a dual comparator, an LT1017 the power supply is given by this inner diode you can see these two resistors are connected to the power supply, which should be 28 volts. The heater is represented here. The voltage across the thermistor is amplified relative to a virtual ground made by these two resistors connected to the power supply. And the output is fed to this comparator, which drives the MOSFET, which drives the heater here. And as you can see, there is a resistor here connected uh, from that point uh, to the rear connector. So probably this permits to change the temperature. And you can see that there is also a diode connected to the virtual ground. So obviously a voltage above 
the virtual ground uh, should be applied in order to have an effect. So I think that the purpose of this thing is to inhibit uh, probably the heater. On the bottom of that page, there is a circuit which permits the regulation of the front end part we have seen. So on the top here, there is a temperature sensor which is represented here. So this is a specific part which, which permits to drive directly the MOSFET transistor. And uh, this is the resistor actually, and this thing here. So there are four wires, but two are connected together and connected to nothing. We can see here. So there are only uh, two wires uh, connected uh, to this resistor, which is a flat resistor, which is represented here. I have measured a resistance of 58 ohms. That's all for the descriptions of the schematic. Okay, I have connected the thermocouple to the top of the front end part here. So I am going to turn on the power supply for the heater. Okay. Okay, the temperature oscillates between 70 degrees and 73, 74. The temperature regulation permits probably to limit the drift of the bias current of the four inputs. And that's all for this missile warning detector. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.